Welcome back, everyone, to the Friday edition of Sports Call. Brett Pritchard, Randy Lee, and Andy Graham here with you, and we'll take your calls on the other side of this segment. But at this time, we want to go to the uh, Tiger Communications Sports Call Hotline and welcome in Barrett Salee with the uh, Bleacher Report, SEC lead writer there. Barrett, you there with us? Going great, Barrett. Thanks for uh, being part of the program this afternoon. And uh, we want to start by just talking about uh, these coaching changes, Barrett. I know you guys have been writing about that and following that. Uh, uh, really no uh, different than every other year. Uh, at the end of the season, you're going to have guys moving around. Uh, I want to start with, uh, with James Franklin uh, leaving uh, Vanderbilt and heading up to, uh, to Penn State. Just want to get your take on that and, and who Vanderbilt just hired to take his place. Well, the move for James Franklin is, is great because he's a Pennsylvania guy. You know, he's been successful at Vanderbilt, which faces, you know, some similar problems that Penn State has right now from a recruiting standpoint. Um, and James Franklin has succeeded in, in, in spite of some academic restrictions at Vanderbilt. Now he's just got, you know, a pure quantity restriction at, at, at Penn State for the next couple of years. So, uh, great hire for Penn State. I think it'll get them back on their feet and, and really help them navigate through what, what still are some pretty rocky waters ahead. Uh, and for, for Vanderbilt and Derek Mason, you know, he, he's good. Uh, he knows how to win in a similar environment. He did it at Stanford. Uh, he's a high energy guy. He's a guy that I think will, uh, will keep that momentum from an, from an excitement standpoint going in the right direction. I just don't know if Vanderbilt hadn't peaked already. You know, nine wins in back to back seasons. Now he's also fighting those expectations, uh, which is not easy to do at Vanderbilt. They, they have some players there, but it, it's still going to be, you know, I think a tall order for him to maintain the program at the current level, at least right now. Um, you know, the, the recruiting class is falling apart. They're without a quarterback. They're missing a ton of defensive pieces. So I think short term, you know, it's going to be a little bit rough for him. But I think long term, he certainly has what it takes to make that program at least, you know, bowl eligible on most years, which is, I think, where it needs to be and, and the bar that James Franklin set for it. Well, Barrett, speaking of James Franklin, uh, you know, him going to Penn State, uh, wh- uh, what's your take on uh, him flipping Vanderbilt's recruits to Penn State? Is that uh, – I know there's no uh, rule against it, uh, th- but uh, is there such a thing as etiquette in this situation? Is it sleazy or is he have... just doing his job? No, he's just doing his job. He's loyal to James Franklin and he's loyal to Penn State and, and he's the Penn State head coach right now. So – you know, if, if he feels that some of those players that he had committed at Vanderbilt are, you know, capable of helping him at Penn State and those guys are willing to come uh, up there, then, then that's that's fine by me. It's all fair game. He's, you know, po- poaching recruits. It's not – I don't even view it as poaching recruits. I view it as James Franklin doing his job and, and nothing more than that. And uh, I find absolutely nothing wrong with it, and I think any coach in that situation, especially one that is, is fighting some scholarship restrictions of his own, uh, would be well served to get his guys, no matter how many bridges he burns in the process. Well, Jerry, Jeremy Pruitt uh, goes from Florida State to Georgia after one season at Florida State, winning the national title. Uh, how, how does that decision uh, make sense? I mean, discounting the three hundred or fifty thousand dollar raise, I think we'd all uh, like to have that. But uh, why does this decision make sense to you? Well, I think for Jeremy Pruitt, it, it's you know. He does get out on his own a little bit. You know, Rick's a little less controlling of his assistants. Um, you know, I don't know exactly what went on behind the scenes. There's been rumors of all kinds of stuff. But, um, you know, if, if if Georgia comes in and offers him, you know, you know, a major salary increase and some stability, more stability than he had before, and a chance to get back to the SEC, a place that, you know, he, uh, you know, kind of cut his teeth in, uh, yeah, I think it was just one of those instances where, where it was a better fit. And not to say Florida State wasn't a good fit. I mean, he won a national title. But, you know, at Georgia, you're talking about now going in with that defensive group. And a lot of those guys were freshmen and sophomores. So you're getting a lot of talent, a lot of young talent that you can sort of mold into your own shape. Um, I think maybe at Florida State, he wasn't going to get that this year, plus the, the salary increase. I just think um, in, in the SEC, it's just all sort of, you know, snowballed into this perfect fit for Jeremy Pruitt one year after winning the national championship. And, um, you know, for Georgia, again, it's, you know, it's addition by subtraction just simply by yeah. the fact that, that Todd Grantham <clears throat> isn't there. And then on, on top of that, you get a actually uh, a functional and a coherent and competent coach in the process in Jeremy Pruitt, a guy who actually is going to treat recruiting with the respect and attention it deserves. That's, it's a home run hire for Mark Rick. Well, and let me ask you this. Uh, you said a, uh, a more secure situation. Uh, we've actually talked about it, uh, his move from Florida State to Georgia. 
not being as uh, secure because what if let's just say Mark Rick goes eight and five again? You know, at what point in time do Georgia fans have enough and say, "Look, you've been a great coach for us, but uh, you know, we, you know, we we can't take this anymore." I mean, Auburn's winning national championships, Alabama's winning national championships, Florida's won national championships, even Tennessee back at the inception of the uh, BCS. Where have we been? We haven't been able to get over the hump, and you know, we've had Mark Rick here the whole time. If 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 he were to get uh, booted, uh, Barrett, then, you know, most of the time the assistants go with them. So, I mean, you just leave a program that won a national championship that, you know, uh, at Florida State, that it's an easier conference to win in in the ACC, and now you move to a high-pressure job at Georgia. Well, Mark Rick's not going anywhere. I mean, he, there is no pressure on him, and I think that's the difference. I mean, yeah, there's, uh, you know, there, there's a little bit of a fringe element that gets frustrated with his complacency, but Mark Rick can, can pick his own retirement date. He's not going anywhere. I mean, they, they could go eight and five next year, and there's not, that's not going to be an issue. He's, his job is absolutely secure. Um, and, and really, you look back a year ago, 365 days ago, you know, people were upset in Florida State about Jimbo Fisher going 12 and two. So, you know, that, 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 that kind of goes both ways, but, um, Georgia's, uh, you know, not an unstable job at, at all in my mind. And, and, you know, in fact, I think it's, a job that Mark Rick feels comfortable with. I think that they feel comfortable with him, and, and he's not on it in any danger of being being let go, barring you know a three and nine type disaster. In, in which case, you know, sure he'd be you know liable to be shown the curve. But I think any coach in the SEC would at that point. So, uh, so you're saying that basically, you know, if they, he just continues to go eight and five, that he's he still can name his own retirement date. Well, he didn't go eight and five two years ago. He was one play from a national championship. I, I know he that. won the East two straight years. So I mean, I, so yeah, you know, if he goes eight and five, yeah, absolutely, he can go eight and five two or three years and be totally fine. Uh, I, there's no chance of of him being let go. Now, if he go again, if he goes three and nine, then then that's a different story. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, Mark Pick has that program at a at a super elite level and and uh, playing at a, at a level that you know Georgia fans had only dreamed of even ever since the Dooley era. So there's no there's no chance of him being let go. Barrett, uh, a couple more things. I want to uh, obviously talk about Lane Kiffin because uh, a week ago uh, today, actually, is when he was announced uh, as the uh, the new offensive coordinator at uh, the University of Alabama. So uh, a lot of people uh, shocked by that hire that Nick Saban, uh, that was out of, the, of his normal realm of, to do something like that. But, you know, uh, his track record as an offensive coordinator uh, uh, is very good, and uh, he, he's been successful in that role. What he hasn't been successful in is being a head coach. But uh, how, how do you see this thing playing out over time? Well, they keep a live mic away from him. So that's a good thing because Kiffin with a microphone in front of him is bad news. So – you know, I think I like the hire. You know, that's a lot of ego in one complex with Nick Saban and, and Lane Kiffin, but I, I get the sense that Lane Kiffin's ego has kind of been taken down a peg or two after what happened at USC. So, you know, I think it is coach speak for Nick Saban to try to defend his hire and say, you know, the things that, that make Lane Kiffin successful are what we're going to ask him to do. But um, I agree. I think it is. I think it's exactly what's happening because now Lane Kiffin can focus on X's and O's. He can focus on developing a quarterback. I mean, the guy made Jonathan Crompton look good in 2009. Uh, you know, so he can, he can do that and, and add some of his own elements into the game plan and, and challenge Nick Saban on some traditional things. And I think Nick Saban knows that, you know, the way he's gone about business the last 10 years probably isn't going to cut it in the new age of college football. So, yeah, I, I think it's a good hire. You know, in recruiting, yeah, he's a great recruiter. I think that element of it is, is way oversold, though, because Alabama sort of just recruits itself. You know, he, he could he could be an ace recruiter. I don't really think it matters. Alabama, you know, still got the number one class in the country without him. So uh, I think that part's overplayed, but I do think that, you know, he is able to focus on quarterbacks, able to focus on X's and O's, and I think that's where he shines in the rest of the stuff, the, the press conferences, the, the media, the, the rubber chicken circuit with boosters. Now, for the most part, save for a few appearances here and there, he, he gets to avoid mostly all that stuff. Barrett, one final thing. Uh, you know, the uh, meetings are taking place with the NCAA, and uh, they're talking mm -hmm. about uh, the major five major conferences being more autonomous and uh, giving them power to, uh, you know, uh, basically play, pay players in, you know, whatever you want to call it, stipend or whatever. It, you know, looking down the line, is college football going to – uh, yeah, obviously we're in for a big change. Is it even going to resemble what we know, what we know now in five years? Uh, five years, I, I maybe a little bit, but in ten years, no. I think it's it's going down a road right now where you know it, it is essentially being established as a farm system for the NFL, which is which is what it is anyway. I mean, everyone knows that, but 
you know, it's, it's becoming more, I would say, true to itself. There, there are, you know, right now there are so many, you know, rules and regulations and laws that prevent it from being, tr- you know, true to what it is. And you know, now when you start talking about full cost of attendance and perhaps, you know, so, some ways for, co- for players to actually market themselves and make money off their image while still in college, you know, I think that's, that's where it needs to be. It doesn't need to be a full-on minor league system because I think uh, there is merit in, in, in quote-unquote amateur athletics. Uh, you just have to sort of loosen up the term amateur a little bit, and I think that's what they're trying to do. The, the big money programs seem to be on board with doing this, and, and honestly, I think the small money programs probably are too because they probably are sick of the of the big boys, you know, complaining and and, and trying to get, pull, pull away. So I think it's going to be a win for everybody involved, you know. Uh, once once it goes you know it goes through and I think it will go through I think the full cost of attendance will be the first thing that goes through and then you know maybe subsequently after that you start getting into you know trust funds that you can you know establish based on memorabilia sales and things of that nature um, and my my contention is this if they start if you have a trust fund and you sell your jersey or have autograph signings or whatever that money gets regulated goes into a trust fund and then you don't get access to it until you graduate that still puts emphasis on the academic side. Still creates you know, quote unquote amateur athletics, but lets people you know enjoy the free market and make money off their image in the process. Well, good stuff there, Baird. Uh, we appreciate uh, you taking some time out to be on the program. We look forward to talking to you again real soon. Okay. All right, my pleasure. Thanks, Trevor. Thanks so much. That's Barrett Salee with the Bleacher Report, uh, and uh, you know he had some great great points there, Andy. I, I just happened to disagree with him about Georgia. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I just to to me, uh, how many would you be content? If you were Auburn sitting here, I know we've gone on a roller coaster. We've been extremely good, or we've been extremely bad. But you know, uh, you know, I know he was one play away from 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 winning uh, or playing for a national championship. But hadn't that been his uh, mantra? Hadn't that been his storyline since he's been at Georgia? Can't get over. I mean, a couple of SEC championships, but outside of that, everybody else has won national championships, and they are in one of the most talent rich areas in the country. Uh, right there, and uh, he's lost his fair share of top players uh, as well. But when we come back, we'll continue to talk about that. 888-9-TIGER-9, 334-887-3401 locally. More to come on this Friday edition of Sports Call right after this. (laughs) 